Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hope all of you had a good weekend. Hope your Monday is doing well. Uh, today, man, I just wanted to come y'all real quick, uh, read like a chapter of this book uh, that I'm on. I'm taking a class on it, actually. It's called 20 Basics Every Christian Should Know, right? Christian Beliefs. <clears throat> Talks about <clears throat> justification, uh, righteousness, all those things, right? So I want to go over it to those who may not know or lack a deeper understanding because I'm, I'm constantly learning more about the Bible and getting a greater understanding. So like I always say in my videos, uh, what I have learned mustache what i have learned what i have taken in uh, i want to share with y'all and help edify y'all and be more secure in your salvation right so it says uh justification is a legal declaration of god right a legal declaration when someone responds to god's call in repentance and faith god responds to that faith by thinking of that person's sins as forgiven and by thinking of christ's righteousness as belonging to that person so we all know that once we're saved, it is not our righteousness, but it is a we put on basically put on the the T-shirt right of Christ's righteousness, and He takes our dirty shirt, which is you know sins and sins of trespasses against the Father, right? So at that very moment, <clears throat> at that very moment, right, uh, God also declares that person to be righteous in His sight. So the moment we are saved, right, the moment we are saved, uh, we are instantly y'all we are instantly uh declared righteous by god in his sight right it's nothing that we can do to be made more righteous by our acts or by our obedience or by the things we do it doesn't make us more righteous we can't be more righteous because it's not our righteousness you can't add on to righteousness or holiness it's a righteousness of christ that covers us okay <clears throat> so this act of god is called justification Justification is an instantaneous legal act of God in which he, one, thinks of our sins as forgiven and thinks of Christ's righteousness as belonging to us. OK, and, and therefore, number two, declares us to be just or morally righteous in his sight. This is why the Bible says no one is good. No, not one. There was no one who seeks after God. There was no one who was morally righteous. You hear people say, well, before I go to church, before um uh i you know get saved i need to get right with god by stop smoking i need to get my career right i need to get my money up i need to get a house or a car i need to do all this stuff before i get right with god and it's like there's no way that you can morally get right with god and there's no way that you can get right with god pertaining to the things that you do and then once i stop smoking and going to the club and and and, and getting drunk now i can go to church no the only way you can be right with God and get right with him is that you believe on the only begotten son, Christ Jesus, the Messiah. And once all that takes place at that moment, you are deemed righteous. You are justified, uh, a legal act made right in the eyes of the father, not because of what you've done, uh, not because you stopped smoking or watching porn, but because <clears throat> of what Christ did on the cross because of his obedience. So obedience, living a perfect life, we take on the righteousness of Christ. OK, Paul is clear that this justification comes after justification comes after y'all justification comes after we respond to the gospel call in faith and that justification is God's response to our faith. So God's it says, let me read again. Um, duh, 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 duh. God's uh, we respond to the gospel in faith and that justification is God's response to our faith. So justification is God's response to our faith. So, oh, you have faith in Christ the Messiah. You have faith in my son. You're justified. You're justified. You're justified, right? <clears throat> in Romans 3 and 26, Paul writes that God is the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. And in Romans 5 and 1, that we are justified by our faith. We're not justified by our works. We're not justified by baptism. People say, hey, you got to be baptized and not baptized. You'll be damned. No, we we are justified strictly by our faith. It is a, it's our faith that justifies us. Uh, I think if you go to the book of Hebrews, uh, they talk about in the pericope, the hall of faith. And you see Abraham in there. Abraham wasn't even a Jew. He was actually a Gentile and he didn't even he wasn't even circumcised yet. He wasn't even circumcised, but it was his faith that justified him, that made him righteous. OK. <clears throat> Um, in Galatians 2 and 16, he writes, we know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but 
through faith in Jesus Christ. These verses clearly show that justification is by faith. So that's that's the gospel. We should all know that that justice is part of the gospel. Justification comes by faith, not of works, not by baptism, not of tongues, not of people laying hands on you and imparting a spirit. No, justification comes by faith in Christ Jesus, the Messiah. All right. When James says a person is justified by works, which people take it as if once you're saved, if you're not continuing in works, then you're not saved. If you're not continuing in works, then you're not. You're not uh, maintaining your salvation. You can lose your salvation because you're not continuing or you're not abiding, right? People say, oh, you know, Christ said abide in me. Those who abide in me, uh, they will endure to the end and all those things. Well, we can't abide in Christ on our own. The, reason, the only reason why we're able to abide in Christ still is because of the spirit that lives inside of us. We can't abide in Christ off, off on our own. But people take that and say, you must abide on your own, off your own will which would then go back to works. But let me keep going. <clears throat> when James says a person is justified by works in James 2 and 21, 24 and 25, he is not contradicting Paul. People think that they're, they're going against each other or contradicting. No, not so. He's not contradicting Paul, but he is using, excuse the noise, my daughter, but, Paul, but he is using justified, he's using justified, in a different sense, not meaning declared righteous by God, but shown to be righteous before other people. OK, as is clear from the context of James 2, 18 to 26, where he talks about outward evidence that a person has faith. So justified by works, we're not talking about justified by works as in being justified by God because of your works, but being justified when it comes down to people seeing you that they will see your works all right so it says a declaration now the next pericope a declaration that we are righteous before god uh if she's done the middle of it you can put her down yeah <clears throat> it says justification is a legal declaration by god it is god acting as a judge declaring that an individual is righteous in his sight Right. An individual is righteous in God's sight. If God has declared you righteous in his sight, you do not have to pay the penalty for your past, present or future sins. So that's the good news about the gospel. As I was talking to one of my brother's quadri, uh, is that Christ paid for the past, present and future sins. If you only pay for the past and the present, but not the future is not the good news, because if the future sins haven't been paid for, then we're not declared righteous we're not uh justified we don't have the righteousness of christ and that's also to say that the blood of christ is also not enough to cleanse us completely and people will likely come back and say well uh yeah he paid for our past and present sins but he didn't die for our future sins because it's on us again when we talk about the gospel when we talk about salvation it's not about us it's not about what we do it's not about us trying to live a sinless perfect life because now we're putting everything on us when it was all, all the, when the work of salvation was done on the back of Christ. Now that doesn't mean we live how we want to live and do what we want to do, but we understand grace is getting what you don't deserve and mercy is not getting what you do deserve. And that's what the gospel is. You get what I'm saying? But let me, let me keep going. Um, <clears throat> if, uh, let me read again. If God has declared you righteous in his sight, you don't have to pay for the penalty for past, present or future sins. Right. Completely paid. Um, as Paul writes in Romans eight and one, there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Later in Romans eight and thirty three, Paul makes it clear that no one can bring a charge or condemn God's elect. No one can bring a charge or condemn God's elect. Those whom God has justified have full forgiveness of sins. Understand that. <clears throat> those who God have, who, those whom God have justified, they have been fully forgiven. So that means like when the judge, if you're in a courtroom, the earthly courtroom, and you stand before a judge and he throws out all the charges and that you're not guilty, who can condemn? Who can bring a charge? Who can flip? Who can change the, uh, the, the decision of the judge once that gavel is hit? Again, uh, those who have put their faith in Messiah, they have been uh, justified and fully forgiven of their sins. So 
if we're fully forgiven of we're fully forgiven of our sins, then how is it that people don't believe that Christ died for our future sins? You know what I'm saying? If we've been fully forgiven, but it says that Christ died for our future sins, then you tell me the Bible contradicts itself. You get what I'm saying? So we got to understand that Christ died for our past, present, future sins. And all those who put their faith in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, have been fully justified and have been fully forgiven for all sins for all time. Okay. The sins of those, the sins of those justified are considered forgiven because God considers their sins belonging to Christ. This is why our past and present and future sins have been forgiven because all, all three past, present and future have been given to Christ, have been put upon Christ and we take his righteousness. This is what we call a double uh Imputation, amputation, double imputation, not amputation. That's cutting something off. W, uh, imputation, right? We receive the righteousness of Christ. He receives our sins. We declare righteous in the eyes of God and we are considered, um, he takes away our sins, right? So let me get back to it before I get lost. <clears throat> um, the sins of those justified are considered forgiven because God considers their sins as belonging to Christ and Christ already paid the penalty for those sins. So he paid the sins for the past, present and future. Keep saying that. Right. But not only does God consider those sins as belonging to Christ, he also considers Christ's righteousness as belonging to us. OK, Christ took the place of guilt that we all deserve so that we could take the place of acceptance we all long for. As it says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Because of Christ's work on our behalf, God can, through justification, consider our sins as fully forgiven and consider us as fully acceptable and righteous in his sight. How so? All because of what Christ Jesus did on the cross. The problem is. What people try to do is they try to add works and try to take some type of credit for the salvation. So Christ paid the bill. He paid the bill, right? It, to put it in like a way for y'all to understand, Christ paid the bill completely. We had a trillion dollar debt bill to pay off, right? And what we try to do, we try to throw in, um, what is it called? A tip. You know, people pay a bill like dinner and then somebody else tips, throw a little tip. We try to throw in a tip for what Christ already paid fully. You can't throw in the tip. It's already been paid for. We can't take credit for what Christ has done. The only reason why we are made righteous, the only reason why we are acceptable in the eyes of the Father is because Christ Jesus lived a perfect life because of his obedience. Remember, the Bible says that through Adam, right, many, uh, many were cursed. One man's disobedience, many were cursed, right? Uh, but through one man's obedience, many, through one man's obedience, Christ Jesus, many were made righteous, Declared a uh, legal act, declared, uh, declared not guilty, right? Not guilty. Uh, having the righteousness of Christ upon us as if we didn't sin, right? Having the perfect record of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ took our dirty and nasty record. Okay. Uh, now it says justification by faith alone. Paul explains that people are justified by God's grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus which is in Romans 3 and 24. In Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, Paul is clear when he writes, by grace we have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not of results of works so that no one can boast. Justification comes as a result of God's grace. So us being justified by God is God's grace. God's grace is why we're justified. Justification doesn't come through you speaking the tongues. It's not come through you think being baptism. Justification doesn't come through you uh, consecrating yourself by not watching TV or not doing this and just sitting in a room praying and fasting and crying out to God for two, three hours. You can't get any more justified. You can't get uh, any more uh, favor. You can't get any more extra righteousness because none of it, none of it is uh, is ours. Justification, righteousness, none of it is ours. It all comes by the grace of God which we don't deserve, okay? <clears throat> so justification comes as a result of God's grace, which means we don't deserve it, right? And it comes as God's response to our faith. So justification, 
uh, just like a, a righteous, a, be, us being declared righteous is a response by our faith. So we are justified uh, by our faith. Through our faith, God responds and he justifies us. That's his response to us. Okay. Uh, and it comes as God's response to our faith, which is the opposite of depending on ourselves of our good works. So we understand we're justified not by our good works. We can't depend on our good works because our good works and our good deeds, they don't amount to be able to make the payment for the sins that we have committed against the Father. So this is why Christ Jesus came down and did what he did for us. You get what I'm saying? <clears throat> because a lot of people don't agree, like I see in my comment section, they don't agree with the hypostatic union. They don't agree that Christ Jesus was fully man and fully God. But the moment you... uh take away the deity of Christ or his humanity, or the moment you cut any of those two in half, you actually lessen the impact of what the uh, of what Christ did on the cross. He had to be fully God and fully man to accomplish, you know, uh, to accomplish what he did for us. <clears throat> because if he wasn't fully God, he wouldn't be able to take care <clears throat> of our sin problem. If he wasn't fully God, he wouldn't be able to take care of our sin problem. But also... If he wasn't fully man, then he wouldn't be able to uh, relate to us the way that he could. You get what I'm saying? That Christ was tempted the way we he, we were, that he had emotions the way we had. You know what I'm saying? So he he came down amongst his creation. You feel me? And he felt what we felt. He experienced what we experienced. But at the same time, he never sinned. Right? He was a high priest that could... Uh, what is that word I'm looking for, y'all? He was a high priest that could, that could, you know, uh, feel how how we feel, have that not that sympathy, sympathy, not sympathy. He could, he could just, <laughs> he's a high priest that could just feel how we felt. I can't, I can't remember right now, but he understood how we felt because he was also fully human. So if he wasn't fully God and fully human, what he did on the cross wouldn't be possible, all right? So although justification comes about. As God's act in response to our faith, that does not mean our faith has any merit before God. So even our faith, still not even our faith, our faith plays no merit in, in uh, us receiving salvation, with us being justified and made righteous, right? It is not our faith. It is not our faith that earns us favor with God. Scripture is clear. Justification is based solely on the merits of God's work. We are only justified based off the work alone that Jesus Christ did for us. Nothing else. Again, no baptism, no tongues, no laying of hands. No. Uh, uh, people, oh, you got to get uh, baptized and they receive the Holy Spirit. No, 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 no. Bible tells us that the moment that we that we put our faith in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, at that instant, it says we are made righteous. And if we are made righteous, if we are justified, then surely we must have the Holy Spirit, right? No. Let's keep going. Um, scripture is clear. Justification is uh, based solely on the merits of Christ's work, which is in Romans 3 and 24. It is never based on any merit in our faith. This really is wonderful news because it means we don't have to create or make payment for sins ourselves. We don't have to. People, this is why when we say Jesus paid it all, Jesus did it all on the cross. Nobody's saying be a lazy Christian. Nobody's saying that you just don't do anything. But what we're saying is there's nothing that we could do to be declared righteous. There's nothing we can do to make ourselves justified in the eyes of God because Christ already did the work for us to be made uh, right or be looked at righteous in the eyes of the Father. If you want righteousness, you got to come to Christ. You want to be declared justified? It's through Christ Jesus. There's no other payment. There's no other way. There's no, you can't swipe another card. You can't give another amount of, of spiritual currency to be declared righteous and to be justified. You just can't. It's all by the blood. Christ paid, he paid the currency in his blood. And there's nothing you can do but believe on what he did and who he is as the Messiah, as God. All right. Um, <clears throat> we can look to God through Christ to freely give us that which we know we can't give ourselves. We can't give ourselves salvation. We can't give ourselves eternal life. We can't give ourselves justification. We can't give ourselves glorification. We can't give ourselves, uh, I think I said righteousness. All those we can't. When we're saved, it is Christ who who uh, who justifies us, who makes us righteous, who glorifies us, who sanctifies us, right? Can you glorify yourself? Can you give yourself a glorified body? No, you can't. Can you 
uh, make yourself righteous. No, you can't by your works. No, you can't. Can you justify yourself before God based off what you do? No, you can't. You cannot sanctify yourself in this walk. Why? Because it's God that does it by way of the Holy Spirit. So people understand that if we could lose our salvation, then or if we, yeah, if we could lose our salvation, you got to take away glorification. You got to take away sanctification. You got to take away justification. You got to take away righteousness. God goes back. God has to take away all those things away from you for you to lose your salvation. But the Bible clearly tells us that he uh, he who started the good work will also finish, that he is the author and finisher of our faith. Now, he's the author and finisher of our faith and that what he started, he will finish. Then you telling me he started uh, 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 salvation. He started this new this new life, this new creation, this new creature, this new thing in you. But then he stops it. No, that's that's not how this works. When the Bible tells us that we're a new creature, we're a new creature, that our minds and our hearts have been transformed. Doesn't mean that we're not going to sin. But anyone who's been truly changed by the power of God, they've been changed. And Christ said, I will not lose one. I will not cast out one. All right. You can argue Judas, but Judas wasn't a true believer. He was a false. He was a false convert. All right. So Christ said, I have not lost one, but the son of perdition. So you can put that to rest. Right. So the doctrine of justification was the central difference between Protestant and Roman Catholics at the time of the Reformation, which began with Martin Luther in Wittenberg, Germany in 1517. Luther and all other Protestants who followed him insisted that justification was by faith alone, while Roman Catholics responded that justification was by faith plus use of the means of grace found in the sacraments of the church, such as baptism, confirmation, uh, the uh, Eucharist, E-U-C, I think Eucharist, or the Lord's Supper as experienced in the Mass and Penis. The Protestant doctrine of justification says that we are fully justified by God the instant we believe. For there is, uh, there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8 and 1. The Roman Catholic doctrine says that we are not fully justified until our lives are completely cleansed from sin which will not be until after we die and we have been purified in purgatory. This is what they believe. Protestants say there is no pur purgatory. These differences between Protestants and Roman Catholics about justification have continued to this day. And that's all I got for y'all, man, because I'm, I'm hitting about 23 minutes. But I hope that is blessed, y'all, man. I, I really want y'all to understand that there is nothing that you can do to, to lose your salvation. Nothing that you can do. I'm not saying that you can live how you want. And if you say, oh, you can forfeit your salvation, you can give up your salvation or walk away from God. I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you, no, you can't because salvation never started with you. Salvation had nothing to do with you. People make it seem to be as like, I chose salvation. Uh, I chose Jesus because I chose Jesus. I can walk away from Jesus. It don't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Those who are truly filled with the spirit will endure they will endure they will abide because they have the spirit of god abiding in them how can you abide in something that you were never in you feel me christ has you and and christ has you in in, in the palm of his hand man so i want y'all to be encouraged man be secure in the salvation of jesus christ nobody lives this life perfect we're not going to be perfect we're not going to be sinless but we will uh, we will sin less. I will say that we will sin less. Uh, but um, what y'all think in the comments, man? Uh, I hope that it blessed y'all. I hope that it brought a new understanding to justification, to uh, to righteousness, to being declared right in the eyes of God. You know, maybe uh, like just like uh, myself, um, maybe you were living in in a time in a place of religion at an old church at a, uh, when you were early in your walk. You thought that praying and fasting brought more righteousness. You thought praying and fasting and reading and doing all these extra things, which we should do, but we were doing these things with the wrong motive because we thought it would make us more holy. We thought it would make us more righteous. We thought it would take us to some higher level of spirituality and give us favor. Uh, but, you know, I hope that this opened your eye, opened your eyes, and I hope that it brought you uh, even more understanding uh, and I try my best, man, to go back. I, I have some more subjects, a lot more subjects in this book, man. So many things like it's, it's, it's 20. So maybe I'll read some of these and share with y'all, man. And um, it'll bless y'all. So tell me if y'all would like that, man, uh, in the comment section. 
and let me know how how um how it opens your eyes man but 10 25 minutes i love y'all i'm about to go eat and i'm just gonna relax uh, but y'all stay safe i love y'all peace god bless